I'm just grateful that you allowed this to develop on the side and you didn't hold me back in this dream that I had, you know, because it did ultimately lead to me leaving, but you never once made me feel like I couldn't do it. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Let me introduce you to a podcast you're going to love. It's called The Shine Online, and it's hosted by a former Gold Digger guest, Natasha Samuel, and brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Natasha interviews the brightest entrepreneurs to bring you no-fluff advice, honest discussions about the mental health and lifestyle aspect of entrepreneurship, and actionable strategies and success stories of those who have mastered the art of shining online. Natasha just covered this topic I think you'd love to hear about. She talks about when you're ready to hire a social media manager and when you're not, because hiring a social media manager isn't going to fix your social media problem if you're not ready and willing to show up and do the work too. Listen to The Shine Online wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is sponsored by Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin that my kids love. Head to HayaHealth.com slash Gold Digger for 50% off your first order and get your kids the full-body nourishment they need. I mean, sometimes you have to have conversations that you don't necessarily want to have. And I'm not going to lie, when I saw what I was going to be talking about today, my heart sank. And (laughs) I hit Slack to my girl, Kylie, and I said, I'm always going to blame hormones for the rest of my life. And I mean, I don't need to blame hormones for my emotions. Kylie, why are we talking today? Because Jenna, the time of Kylie on the Gold Digger podcast, working behind the podcast that has gone up to, you know, number one on the marketing charts, this amazing thing that you've built and that you've let me usher along for the last four years, my time's coming to an end. It's bananas. Today, we are going to talk about our journey together, all the things that we've learned, what it really feels like to move on, what Kylie is excitedly moving on towards, and everything in between. And you know, we might need to grab Kleenexes for this one. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Hopefully not too, too many. Let's do it. All right. So first, walk me through. Let's kind of talk about our journey together as we got started and kind of how it began. I will never forget when you came to Duluth, Minnesota, meeting you at the Caribou Coffee <laughs> and the hiring process where I was about to go on to maternity leave and my sister who had previously held your position while she was kind of in between careers was now entering school. And so we had kind of hit this pivotal place of like, all right, well, we've got to make a change. And I remember interviewing you and just being so excited about you. And I remember your mom being like, so wait, you're flying to Duluth, Minnesota. You've never (laughs) met this person. Are you sure you're not getting kidnapped? (laughs) Yeah, she was very skeptical of this whole thing, as I'm sure is totally relatable to you. Like the online space just was so foreign to my mom. She couldn't understand. Are you sure this is a job? What do you mean? So, yeah, I mean, I applied for the job. I remember someone, I think from your hometown or someone you knew from Wisconsin, was my hairstylist at the time or had been my hairstylist in the past. And she's like, hey, I saw this Instagram story about a job that I think you might be great at. And she just shot it my way. And I applied. And then four days later, I had a job. And it was a really crazy time in my life because I had been living in New York City with my now husband, Chris. And we had moved there for his job. And I had left a job that was pretty damn near close, a dream job for me. I I left it so we could pursue his dreams in the big city. And so I had been unemployed for nine months and having all these identity issues wrapped up in, okay, what's my worth if I'm not working? And what's my next step going to be having 
you know, radio experience and marketing experience. And I just didn't know what my next step was, was going to look like. And then enter the Gold Digger podcast. And it's really become, I think, the biggest launch pad for me into what what I know now I'm meant to do, which is be in the podcasting and the audio storytelling space. So it really launched a lot for me, that one little LinkedIn post. Crazy. I mean, it is wild to think about like the journey. And I mean, a lot of times too, when we take on new roles or when we learn new skills, it's really hard to connect the dots of like, how is this going to move me forward? Or what does this even look like? Or what is this all for? And it's kind of this beautiful full circle moment that is happening in so many ways. Let's talk about kind of putting in your notice (laughs) what that looks like, what that's been like. You share your side and then I'll share my side because I actually think it's been a really beautiful process in my opinion. Yes. However... (laughs) <laughs> I was <laughs> I was really scared to tell you. I mean, I've never quit a job because I hated the job. Yeah, you know, I've always I've left You don't hate this my job. Do you? <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. I I I say that it, my track record continues with this. I'm not leaving because I didn't like it or because it was, you know, some people will experience a toxic workplace environment or it's just not aligned with their skills and the opportunity dissolves in that way, but for me it was Every time I've left a position, it's because I knew it was time to take a step in the direction of of my ultimate dream. And so I just, even though I'd been playing with the idea, you know, I thought, could I do it? Should I do it? Is now the time to do it? I really wasn't confident in the fact that I was going to give my notice to you until really like the 24 hours before I did it. And I had only really been seriously considering it for about a week. And so When I told you that day and we had been recording a Kylie and Jenna episode just like this and you had like two minutes to chat after and I was just like, if I don't say it right now, it's going to fester inside of me (laughs) and I'm not I won't get it out. And so I told you I was leaving it when I say it was hard. It's because this job, this show, it does mean a lot to me and I've put a lot of work into it and we've put a lot of work into it together. And so stepping away from it was really scary. And like my heart was pounding through my chest and I was like, and and, you know, why was I scared? Were you going to flip out at me and have this like terrible, negative, angry reaction? I don't know why I ever thought that was a possibility because that would be so like departed from who you are and what this relationship has been like as far as boss, employee and and friend. But yeah, it was scary. It was really scary to give my notes. What did I say to you when you told me? Like, what was that experience? Like, do you even remember? Did you black out? (laughs) I blacked out because in that moment I was like, oh my God, I just said it. Like, I can't unsay it. But I think you said, you said, I think that's beautiful. I'm excited for you and I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, like I got you like this. You know, it's it's super interesting. Part of being a boss and part of too, even when I look at like writing my book and stuff, like a lot of it is listening to your gut and listening to your heart. And I feel like I've been listening to your heart as your boss and in touch with your goals and your dreams. And I feel like I've bought into the vision that you've probably been selling yourself at two in the morning when you're anxious and wondering what the heck am I even thinking? But when I say that I like feel tethered to you because of the proximity we've worked in and the life that we've been through, when you told me, I was like, heck yes, this is great. I was like, do not worry. We've got this. We will figure this out and you're going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And I believe that. And it's interesting because, I mean, let's talk about this. I've always (laughs) known that this day would come. And I feel like part of one of my gifts, maybe, I don't know, it's weird to say, but I feel like I'm very intuitive. And even when I hired you nearly four and a half years ago, I'll never forget saying this to you, but I was like, you're going to leave me someday. (laughs) You're, You're not like, this position is amazing for you. And you were so freaking good at it but it wasn't meant for you forever. And I think it's very rare to find people and get them into positions where you envision like, this is it, right? Like, I just, I don't know if that exists. I don't know if that's us being millennials. I don't know. But especially with you, I always felt this entrepreneurial spirit, this spirit of like having these bigger visions 
And I, as a boss, hopefully did a good job of allowing you to like foster those and like not shut them down and like explore them. Well, one of the things I asked you during the interview process, which was quite speedy, as is all (laughs) everything Jetta Kutcher does when she hires. One of the things I asked you was, do you have any reservations about me continuing to pursue creative endeavors on the side or having a side hustle? Because I had been through interview processes. Like I said, I had been unemployed for nine months. I had been going through interview processes and almost every single one, even though it was a creative role that I would be landing in, they wanted me to put the kibosh on every single creative thing I had going independently. They didn't want me to have my own thing. They didn't want me to have a side hustle. And that was a deal breaker for me because how can you as a creative person give all your energy and effort to a dream that's not yours and still feel satisfied? And so it was so important for me to be able to pursue these things. And I didn't for a while. I didn't have any side hustles when I first started with you. I just, I wanted to know that I could if I ever wanted to. And I didn't start exploring it until about a year in. And and you've always been supportive of that. And I think we've had some episodes and conversations on the show about how that's really unique and it's unique within the industry you exist in. Because I know a lot of similar people in your field in this space also put those limitations on the people they hire. So Mm -hmm. it's interesting because even in conversations like, oh my gosh, like we're hiring and this is like a big deal. But like I've had peers be like, yeah, well, you shouldn't like, and I'm like, no, no, no. Like I believe in like, we are all like multi-passionate creative beings. I really believe that. And I think that like creativity breeds creativity and I will always believe that. And I don't look at this as a loss. I mean, it is a loss on a lot of levels, but I like (laughs) look at this as just like an extension of like where we're going together. And I don't know. I feel a lot of peace with it. Like when you told me there was a moment that my heart like sank and then it was like, then I went into like logistical mode of like, okay, what does this look like? And then I was like, the undercurrent of all of this is peace because I want to see someone that I love going for it. And I want to help however I can. And I also want to get somebody in the position who is like fully devoted to this thing in terms of like what that looks like. Like it's all, it's all good. And I think that a lot of times we look at these situations, especially if you are someone who employs people and it's easy to be like frustrated or disgruntled or upset or whatever. And it's like, if you truly like love your people, like you can't say that you treat your team like family and then not get excited when your family is like succeeding. Right. (laughs) And so for me, I'm just like, okay, I'm separating like the boss and the logistics side of this. And like right now I am a friend who is like freaking rooting Kylie on, on this next chapter. And that's the role that I get to play, which is honestly really exciting for me. I, I mean, I'm so excited. You know, you know, the inner workings of the last year of my life and the events that altered my brain chemistry and just put me in a place where if I could only choose one thing to pursue moving forward, it has to be my dreams now. Like I have to bet on myself. I think I said that when I gave my notice, it's time for me to bet on myself. And I'm just grateful that you allowed this to develop on the side and you didn't hold me back in this dream that I had, you know, because it did ultimately lead to me leaving, but you never once made me feel like I couldn't do it. Well, you know what? I've been prepping for the last four years for you to leave. So (laughs) (laughs) I gave you (laughs) ready. Let's talk about this though, because I do something that I think has been really interesting, even in the process of trying to hire your replacement is kind of recognizing that there is a different energy in terms of people who are incredible and deeply desiring this employee place and people who have that more entrepreneurial spirit. And I feel like, you know, over the years, especially doing what I do and teaching the way I teach, I can sense that entrepreneurial spirit. And it's like this little flame that like you never want to put out in someone. 
And I can also say like on our team, I have people that will deeply desire and feel fulfilled being an employee for the rest of their lives. And I think the world needs both of those people, right? I think that's an area that maybe I got wrong in the past because I just wanted to sell entrepreneurship to everyone because it's something that has just benefited my life in 8 million ways. But I've also really come to realize there's so much power in people that are incredible employees. And I feel like you've always had that spark. And I love that about you. Yeah. When I got honest with myself about what I really wanted. You know, you talk a lot about our own definition of success and what it feels like to arrive. And when do you feel like you've arrived? And in all honesty, I will never feel fulfilled as a supporting act. And I've been a really great one. It's something I'm so good at. Like I can confidently say I rocked this position for the last for almost five years. But I'm never going to feel truly in my power, in my purpose, like I'm doing my life's work unless I'm working on my own project. And I I don't think there's any, you know, my dream of being the visionary and the storyteller and having my own show and all that, that doesn't, it's not any better than someone who wants to be an employee. Like you said, it's just, I know in my heart of hearts that my arrival will come when I'm working on my own thing. And I've tried to avoid it. You know what I mean? Like I've tried to avoid entrepreneurship because it's not a guarantee. And it is scary as heck to think that I am now going to be responsible for my own income, my own security. There's not going to be a maternity leave. Like there's not going to be that cushion moving forward that I had as an employee. But I know that this was the time for me to bet on myself and to dive in and to stop trying to get away from what was always meant for me. And that is working on my own. AI is such a hot topic right now, but how can you really use it in your business in a way that moves the needle? What if AI could take over tedious tasks like pulling reports, rewriting blog posts, and trying to personalize countless prospecting emails? Well, introducing HubSpot's newest AI tools, Content Assistant and ChatSpot. Content Assistant uses the power of OpenAI's GPT-3 model to help you create content outlines, outreach emails, and even web page copy in just seconds. And in case that wasn't enough, they created ChatSpot, a conversational growth assistant that connects to your HubSpot CRM for unbeatable support. With chat-based commands, you can manage contacts, run reports, and even ask for status updates. The easy-to-use CRM just got even easier. Head to HubSpot.com slash artificial dash intelligence to get early access today. Did you know that typical children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise, filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk growing kids should never eat? Maybe you're not surprised, but as a mom, I am always looking for ways to fill in the nutritional gaps my girls aren't getting naturally in their diets. That's why I was so excited to learn about Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Now, Haya is made with zero sugar, zero gummy junk, yet it tastes great and is perfect for picky eaters. I can tell you firsthand that Coco loves her Haya vitamins and the bottles she was able to decorate with the stickers included in her first order. And I love them too. They send me eco-friendly refills every single month. So I have one less thing to do on my to-do list. Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals. Plus they are non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for you to receive 50% off your first order of their best-selling children's vitamin. Head to HayaHealth.com slash Gold Digger to claim this offer. It is not available on their website. Again, that is H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash Gold Digger and get your kids the full body nourishment they need. It's kind of crazy, but I like even in this conversation, I remember those feelings of like, it's like a freaking roller coaster where you're like, I mean, this is going to be amazing. It's all going to work out. And then like the next 10 minutes, it's like, what about a 401k? And what (laughs) happens if, you know, like your brain like spirals and it's this like beautiful, tumultuous time. But I can also say too, and, and I've said this to so many people I love that have had, you know, successful side hustles or they have this vision or they have this plan. It's like, 
when you go all in and you get to see the direct results that your hard work creates, it is addicting in a beautiful way that gives you something that collecting a paycheck will never give you. Because I think there is something so cool, at least for myself, in that like, I am in control of direct results, which is not always possible when you're an employee. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I mean, Talk it's to everything. me about like the logistical <laughs> side of this, because, you know, there's a lot of life happening yeah. behind the scenes on top yeah. of the work. So, you know, I believe there are two types of people. It's like jump in the net will appear, or there are people who I air on this side. Let me weave the net and cross stitch <laughs> it into place before I make the leap. Where did you land on this? Okay, I can honestly say that I was more emotionally ready to leap. Like I had an emotional net, but as far as the other net, the logistics, that is still being woven as I free fall towards my end date, to be honest. You know, there's there's opportunities. Obviously, you know, I've been working really hard on my podcast. Here comes the plug. It's called Dark Down East. It's a true crime show dedicated to stories from my home state and Maine and New England. And I've been working on it since December of 2020. It's been this little side project, this passion project that's taken on a life of its own. And so it's not like I've had overnight success that has led me to say, peace out, Jenna, here I go out on my own. But I have like the emotional readiness and just like this vision of what's possible if I am able to give all my time to it. And I knew that I couldn't get it to where it is self-sustaining and it is my sole source of income until I had all of my hours to pour into it. And so I'm building the net as I free fall. I know I'll land in that net, <laughs> but it wasn't fully built before I jumped, before I gave my notice. But that was the only way it was possible for me. You know, I yeah. would get so frustrated looking at my idealist, you know, my brain dump of all these things I wanted to do and knowing like, okay, but you don't have time. You have a six month old baby you have a husband, you have to take care of yourself and you have a day job, which had responsibilities that I absolutely needed to fulfill. And so I just knew that I had to give myself the time to make this what I know it could be. And so quitting came first for me, which I know is not mm -hmm. a privilege or a reality for a lot of people, but that's how it worked for me. Yeah. Well, and I love that. I mean, I think it's important to show both sides of the coin and to really look at it. And I do think there are some dreams that can be built, you know, burning the midnight oil. And there are some dreams that require full attention and full focus to really make a reality. And that's a risk, but it's also the reward. And I think that that's a really powerful thing to look at it. You know, to steal some words from, from your story, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, my show tanks. I don't make enough money. So I get another job. Yeah. Like that end is not scary to me. And it's and not so, a failure. <laughs> it's not a failure. Like I just come knocking on Jenna's door again. Like, please give me a VA position. Like help me yeah. buy groceries. But but in, in reality, that wasn't that scary to me. I finally mm -hmm. got to the point where it didn't freak me out. Like the benefits yeah. far outweighed the, the risks there. I feel like I did this exercise that I tell people to do if they're kind of in that position where you write like if then statements and you write down your worst fears, like the fears that you won't tell anyone when you're thinking about making this leap. Like if, if this fails miserably, then I will update my resume and get myself back out on the market. If I am not able to make enough income, I will use my other marketable skills as a side hustle. Like, you know, it's just like, if you can actually create an action plan 99.9% .9 of the things that you are imagining as the if statements will likely never happen. But if they do, you have a plan. And it's suddenly it's like fear kind of loses its grip when you have an action plan in place. Yes, I agree. It also, my fears became less about will I make enough money and more about what if I never take a chance on this? Like, what if I have unfinished business and like, not to get emotional. Actually, I'm going to get emotional for a second. But you know, I lost my mom last year. And I haven't talked about that on the podcast yet. And it was, it was sudden to a degree. She had a stage four cancer diagnosis. We knew that her time was limited, but we just didn't know how limited. And she died with unfinished business. 
And she had dreams that she had just started to grasp. She always dreamed of owning a campground and she had bought a campground and she was building this beautiful life that was going to be her retirement. And she didn't get to fulfill it. She spent her life working. And it just like, like I said, it altered my brain chemistry last year. And so my fears were less about, you know, what will I do if I don't have money? It was more like, what if I don't do this thing that I know I'm so capable of? Like, it just wasn't something I was willing to delay anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> I well, and I feel like, too, when we look at your last year, you went through so much. I mean, I was actually when I was interviewing candidates, I was telling them, I was like, you know, Kylie and I have been together for four years. And I said, in the last four years, we have had three babies between us, <laughs> gone through a cancer diagnosis and the loss of your mom. Like we have been through your wedding, your move, my move. You know, I mean, we've been through so much life together mm -hmm. and it would be impossible for you to be the same person after the year you walked through last year, both in losing your mom and becoming a mom. And so I, you know, there's a part in my book where I talk about like, having this vision and like having people in your life to point you back to it when it feels too dark or too far, or too impossible. And I feel like your mom has this vision like solidified for you with such conviction to go after it, that it is such a beautiful honoring of her and her spirit, but it also gives you urgency that you likely didn't have before all of this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, last year was both the worst and best year of my life. And what timing to be slamming into postpartum emotions and hormones to lose my mom three weeks after my daughter was born. But also, I can't ever look back on the year I lost my mom as the worst year period because my beautiful daughter came into this world. And so it truly was I mean, it was a transformative year, but you're right. You know, my mom, endlessly proud of whatever I did. Once she figured out what the heck my job was with you, she was <laughs> proud of me. <laughs> you know, and so it just feels I'm emotionally ready to bet on myself in knowing that I have my mom's, you know, pride and support. And this is what she would have wanted. You know, she would have wanted to be able to pursue her dreams and take action sooner. And so it's a very emotional time for me. It's a beautiful time for me. But there's just so many things that led into my readiness to make this big life change. And I'm just glad that I have <laughs> your support in it as well. Of course. Okay. I just have one final question, but I think you've kind of already answered it. Okay. Do you have? any regrets in Ooh. allowing me to pursue something that ended up being what took me away from you? Like, will you conduct yourself any differently with future employees or, or what would you do the same, I guess? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. And I say that with such hesitation. So your replacement, who is amazing, her name is Christy. You all will likely meet her soon. She has her own business on the side. And that doesn't scare me. I love it. I love that part of it. And I do think that, you know, there are so many benefits of what you were learning while you were growing your own show that likely applied to your position at Gold Digger, right? Oh, absolutely. And so I, I don't really regret it. I think there were times where I was like, how is she doing all of this? Like, how does that <laughs> even work? Or I'd see things on your feed and I'm like, why are we not doing that? Can we not <laughs> apply that copy paste over here? Like, that would be awesome. But honestly, at the end of the day, like, I am a creative person. Look at me. I don't do one thing. And for me to expect my team to be all in on a vision that like I solely create and own. I don't think that's fair. I believe that it's so important to trust your employees and the way that they honor what their timing looks like. And I don't know. I just like, I am so excited to like, just get to be your friend and cheer you on every step of the way. And talk to you about all things life and not things about work. And like, I'm just, I think that this is a beautiful step for our relationship as well. And I also think it's a really exciting time for this podcast 
to have new energy and to like experiment with someone different. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel very grounded and excited and at peace and pumped for you. I can't describe it in any other way. I completely agree. I think it's high time for a new era of the Gold Digger podcast. I am parting ways on the absolute best terms and with only excitement to see what somebody with a fresh set of eyes can do with this show. You know, I haven't been able to look at it from 40,000 feet in a long time because I've been so in it. And so I'm I'm really looking forward to what happens after me because I'll still be a listener and like I'll still be texting you about like how do I get my daughter to take a model <laughs> when she like only wants the boob 24 of it like <gasps> so yeah like our our friendship will get to develop in new ways and and transparently you know if anyone's listening thinking like how did Kylie do it how did she run her own show and have a full-time job and have a six-month-old baby without childcare and the list goes on and on the answer is what I told you this morning Jenna without rest or self-care but a positive attitude and it was not (laughs) a positive attitude can only take you so far so I am looking forward to just having better boundaries around my work and you know after work not having to jump right into the next project getting to actually relax when Clara goes to bed so I am so excited for you I also think this is a beautiful reminder too for people like the hustle is required to an extent, but there also has to be a finish line, right? It can't be maintained. And I think that this is a really beautiful look at what that can look like and how it's not easy and it's not without hard things or aspects, but it can be really beautiful and exciting And Kylie, thank you from myself and all of our listeners for the way that you have fostered and created and developed this show. We were dying over the fact that we have gotten tens of millions of downloads since you started and just at how we've been able to grow this while walking through a heck of a lot of life together. And I know I say this on behalf of me and the team and my listeners, we are going to miss you. But I know with utter certainty that this is not the end of hearing Kylie Lowe. And I sincerely hope all of these listeners go and follow you over at Dark Down East. Give us a quick plug for where we can find you so that we can follow your journey and watch as your entrepreneurial journey expands. You can find Dark Down East wherever you listen to the Gold Digger podcast at darkdowneast.com, Dark Down East on Instagram. And I even started a TikTok, I, I guess. Who am I? You can find Dark Down East on TikTok as well. I'm so excited just to pour into this thing and bring it to the level that I know it can be at. So like I said in the team call, I'll see you on the charts, Jenna. That's right. That's right. <laughs> This is farewell, but it is not the end. Um, hey, I'm getting choked up now. What the heck? I know. <laughs> Kylie, I love you and I honor you. And I am so excited to be your number one fan on this next chapter. I will miss you in my Slack channels the way we just get down to business. <laughs> but I cannot wait to watch you fly. And I know that your mom is so freaking proud of you. And I'm going to cry now too. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shana. This has been, it's been amazing. It's really been a transformative four years going on five years. And I landed in this job at the exact time I needed it most when I I really wasn't sure what was next for me. So thank you for taking a chance on me, a radio girl with no podcast experience. This has been just an absolute dream. There's only one final thing for you to do. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. Now I'm bawling. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 